So I'm very excited to uh, present to you a feature which is still in preview, but hopefully it will become generally availability soon so that you can start using, uh, uh, which is yeah, the feature is called Federated Credentials to eliminate the uh, need for any more secrets to uh, streamline your Power Platform deployment. So a little bit about me. Come on. Having issues with my okay, it's working. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, me, uh, I'm Rashmi Okwe, currently working as consultant at Avanard and MVP in Emphasis by Development. So, these are my social handles if you want to reach out, create to any queries about today's presentation or any anything. But I keep posting on social media, feel free, yeah, to reach out. Thank you. And to connect as well. So uh, I'll just go for a brief overview of the CICD uh, for Power Platform using Azure DevOps and a description of what the federated credentials is and followed by a demo um, of how it is. So CICD, it's um, a subset of ALM, which is Application Lifecycle Management, which will allow you to <coughs> deploy your Power Platform solution in a reliable, scalable, and efficient way with uh, automation, with minimum manual intervention. Intervention. So in that instance, um, it's one of the kind of um, recommendation is ready to have all your Power Platform artifacts and within solutions in managed environments. Artifacts, I'm referring to anything like Power Apps Form, Power Automate, it could be Copilot Studio, agent as well and it's more like when I was exploring Copilot Studio agent that's why I came across the federated uh, credentials because each time you create a Copilot Studio agent it creates a, a corresponding app registration with federated credentials and then I thought like mm, that's quite um, um, yeah and then I thought like let me explore it how I can because that's something I always wanted like um, to try to eliminate the use of secrets uh, based on my own experience of dealing with it so um, the CICD normally it's back uh, using app registration configured with current secrets and being a developer who doesn't always have access uh, to the Azure portal to create or update the app registration, or even as project administrator to create the service uh, connection within uh, Azure DevOps, you're kind of exposed to a kind of a black box and anything, whenever you try like to deploy, it's, uh, it, it doesn't work after six months or one year and because uh, the client secret has expired and then you need to rely on multiple stakeholders uh, to kind of um, <clears throat> rotate, re regenerate, configure the client secret and you're just hoping that it will be done in the correct way to prevent any uh, delays um, or uh, uh, within your deployment. And uh, the thing that you have to think about is, um, especially you have multiple stakeholders, um, have to store these kind of secrets safely, store and share it. You might, um, it can add yeah, some burden to use as something like a password manager or key vault. And then if you don't store it properly, you have the risk of credential leaks. It can be quite dangerous if someone get hold of your client secret, client ID, tenant ID, they can act on behalf of that uh, app registration or service principle to access resources in your tenant without you being aware of. Uh, which is something we won't like to uh, prevent. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, I mean, one thing I would say, like the alternative is use federated credentials um, for the Power Platform de deployment, but then uh, in case, um, case client secrets is quite simple to set up and depending on the resources that you are um, using, you might still require the client secrets. It's not going to uh, solve everything, but at least it's going to like to improve uh, the process a little bit. Uh, so federated credentials, the essence of it is to allow different type of services to communicate with each other by establishing a trust relationship. 
So in that instance, um, we have a pi pipelines within the Azure DevOps trying like to connect to Power Platform, um, use leveraging the Entra ID, um, which um, yeah for uh, to get like all the token. So how it works? So um, I have the pipeline which is the workload. It's going to request a token from. Azure DevOps, because Azure DevOps can issue the token itself, it sends the token and the pipeline, it sends uh, the token to the Entra ID and the Entra ID verifies like uh, the token using the Open ID Connect before issuing the access token to the pipeline to, um, for, the pipe, uh, for the pipeline to access resources within the platform either to export the solution into the source repository or to uh, import back the solution in different environment from the source repository. I try like to put it um, in a picture by uh, using the, uh, the links that's there on this slide. Please uh, do go ahead and read a little bit more about it. I'm not an expert, it's just like something quite new I came across recently and I just tried to document as much as I could as the way I understand it. Um, next, um, I mean, yeah, so the advantage is, is like improve security. It will reduce the administrative burden where you don't have to deal with secret expirations and it will streamline your deployment processes um, for your Power Platform solution. Now I'll just go, what does actually mean uh, in the principle? So here I've created three different registration targeting different power platform environment, dev, prod, and test. You might have more um, environments depending on your scenario, but uh, I'm on a, on a dev tenant and I could, could only create like three manage uh, environments. Um, so that's why I have only three. Um, if I go into the configuration of one of them, all three of them has been configured quite in a similar way. I'll just go through one of them <coughs> to show you <coughs> how it's been configured. So if I go to the certificate and secrets, what's interesting, you'll find there's no certificates or client secrets configured. I have only one feder federated credentials. And uh, if I go to how I've configured it, so for federated credentials scenario, I've used over issuer because it's targeting Azure DevOps. But if you have GitHub Actions, potentially you could use GitHub Actions. I didn't try it, uh, but I think um, it will work kind of similar way. The only thing <coughs> is um, for the issuer and the value, it follows a particular format. So you might need to work it out uh, what it needs to be. Um, for the Azure DevOps, um, um, like the URL, the first bit of the URL for the issuer is the Azure DevOps. And this is um, the organization ID. So within Azure Ad DevOps, you can create different organization. So I have one organization, this is organization ID. And uh, for the identifier, which is kind of the token which uh, Azure DevOps is going to issue to the pipeline um, is made up of the organization name uh, the project name and the service connection. Um, I need to specify the audience. Uh, the audience is the enter ID, but here it's written Azure AD token exchange. Just remember Azure AD is the old name for enter ID. I don't think that's going to get changed. And once that's done, I'm just going to show you um, something else. Um, <laughs> One other thing I was mentioning, like I noticed the this particular federated credentials when I was playing with uh, Copilot Studio. So whenever you create a Copilot Studio agent, it creates uh, an app registration in the background, and now uh, and then uh, and then it creates like a uh, federated credentials. I tried to look into it, but I don't know exactly what all the elements means in terms like of the uh, <coughs> different um, values and I didn't find anything to explain what actually each element of those mean. 
but I'll be good like uh, to learn. Um, okay, so once you have the app registration, um, we have all service principle, we have a thing, what you'll do, you go to the corresponding Power Platform environment and you assign the service principle uh, a role <coughs> within the Power Platform environment in that instance. I'm just adding it as system administrator. That means we'll be able like, to do everything, to deploy and to export solution. And the next thing I need to do is uh, uh, I need to create the service connection. So here in Azure DevOps, I don't know whether in GitHub Actions, whether we'll see the same behavior, but that will be something I need to try it out. Uh, so I'm like in Azure DevOps, um, in my project um, service connection, and I have um, a few service connections being created for the dev, test, and prod. And this is a configuration for my service connection authentication method, I'm using the workload identity federation. Normally, if you're using client secret, we'll use the application ID and client secret. Uh, and, um, and I'm just specifying the Power Platform environment URL. This is a service principal ID, client ID, return ID, and yeah, just the name. And I don't have any secret in here. And the next thing I need to do is within the pipeline. So I have two pipeline configured, one for the EI, continuous integration, uh, which is going to export the Power Platform solution from the dev environment and now uh, an import, import it, uh, commit it to the source um, control repository and I have like this um, for release pipeline, which is going to deploy the Power Platform solution to different environment test and prod. Ideally, because in that particular scenario, I'm using what we call like the modern pipeline or YAML, I could have both in the same. Um, I didn't need to have a differentiation between the CI and CD, but it's just um, for simplicity, I just kind of have it separate. Um, it might take a while like to actually finish, uh, but I won't just uh, I won't just run it. But I'm just gonna show you like um, a bit a snippet of that particular YAML. Uh, so what I'm doing is actually referring to a um, template file with all the different actions, and um, and here I'm just calling the template, uh, and it's passing different parameters, and one of them is the service connection. Um, to deploy to the test um, environment and another stage to deploy to the production environment and passing a different service connection. So I'll just go through a one which has already been run before just to show um, how it is. So I've got two particular uh, stages, deploy to test and one deploy to prod and both has kind of similar set of action, one which is getting the source artifacts from the repository, um, installing the Power Platform tool installer, and then importing the solution within the environment, uh, Power Platform environment, which is a test and the prod. And if you look at the authentication type, it's using the Workload Identity Federation. For me personally, it's um, a feature which is, which if it was um, available even a year before, would have helped me save a lot of time each time I have to deploy a Power Platform solution. So, um, conclusion, it, yeah, it's um, using the feature will streamline and make your deployment process more secure. And the next steps, we have a few new tools and features within the Power Platform, which myself I need to try out, but have not really tried out. One is the ELM accelerator, the native uh, Git in integration of Power Platform solution to uh, repository directly, that would remove the need to have like a CI uh, with a pipeline, continuous integration pipeline, but that's something I need to try and 
for the automated testing, it's always kind of a good to have automated testing within your LLM. That's all from me. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.